Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to go on a road trip. We're gonna head out to a pretty special location, a beautiful waterfall that's tucked inside a massive canyon. Now this location I've been to multiple times and I've got a couple of images that I've made there in the past, but to be honest, I just, when I look at them, I just feel like I really didn't do the place justice. I wasn't able to capture the essence of this spectacular location. I've come to realize that one of the main missing ingredients is rainfall. You don't really say that too often in landscape photography, but a location like this, rainfall can really transform it, particularly when you're dealing with a waterfall. So I'm hoping to get out there and have this rainfall just give a little bit more flow to the waterfall itself, but also give us maybe a mistier type atmosphere. So just pulling up the old image here, just jumped on the website and this is kind of my first attempt of the waterfall itself. And, you know, when I look at this shot, I was really drawn in by the fern that you have down the bottom, but I feel like I just really didn't do justice to the fact that this waterfall is tucked inside a canyon. You know, I've, I've isolated the finer details here of the fall, but the more I look at this one, I think, nah, this really doesn't showcase the beauty of this waterfall itself. So I'm hoping to capture something a little bit wider and really get the combination of canyon and waterfall. Whereas when I look at this one, it's more just a waterfall image itself. Another one that I do have, this is more focusing on the canyon and I really like this image, but it doesn't have the waterfall whatsoever. So you can see this one here, and this is just capturing the beauty of the canyon. You can see what a spectacular location it really is. But the goal today is let's get the waterfall. Let's really get canyon and waterfall together. So really it's like I wanna combine this image, which is the same location, and I wanna capture the beauty of the canyon, but then also showcase the waterfall in a single frame. So I feel like I've captured this place, the two different aspects, but let's go there. Let's try and get the two combined and see if we can pull it off. And I just think the rainfall is really gonna to bring to life that waterfall as well, and just give us that real atmospheric feel in the place. So I really can't wait to get out there and just see what we find. And my son, Judah, he's eight years old. He's gonna be joining me on this adventure. Every now and then he'll join me out in the field and it just makes for a truly special moment when he can come along. All right, mate, you ready to roll? The rain's definitely not as heavy as I thought, so hopefully the second waterfall is going off in there. We'll find out, eh? My favourite photography is spontaneous photography where I'm not overly planning anything. When I do plan a shoot like this, I always still allow for that spontaneity and I'm always open to the fact that what I had in mind, what I envisioned, may completely get thrown out the window for various reasons. Maybe the conditions don't align, which is probably the most likely scenario, but sometimes I just really want to be open to nature and not really just close myself into that one goal. So even though we are coming out here trying to photograph this canyon and you know pull off that idea that I had I'm still open to the fact that I could get in there and my favorite image or the image may be something completely different again. When you're in the rain there's so many things that can go wrong one of the hardest things obviously is just keeping the lens dry and being able to get frames that don't have the raindrops on them there's also the risk obviously of destroying the camera I try to combat that by just carrying with me big dry towels and just keeping the camera covered up as much as I can. My son, all he's ever known is dad being a photographer and I've tried to bring him out in the field as much as I can with me over these years and I feel like, you know, my photography and becoming a father, it all kind of happened around that same point in time. So being able to, you know, have my son as he grows join me in the field and then understand what I do and then come to appreciate nature as much as I do. It, it means more than anything to me. Well, the conditions were just absolutely incredible. I'm pretty sure I've got something there. Obviously, it's a challenge shooting in such a dark environment, so the raw files on the back of the camera are quite flat. So I'm looking forward to getting it home, and pulling up all the details and seeing what we've got here to work with. So we're back in the studio now and Man, those conditions were beautiful. The rainfall looking up into the canyon was spectacular and I'm pretty stoked to walk away with a couple of images here to really showcase that. More of a, a study on the rainfall itself and just the textures of the canyon. But of course, I really wanted to remember, get the waterfall and the canyon together in a single image. So we're gonna look at our waterfall raw file now. You can see the settings, it's half a second exposure at F10. 
ISO 640. Now, one of the main challenges in a scene like this and pretty common in landscape photography is that big dynamic range. You can see that I've got that highlight up the top there, as well as all the bright tones in the water. And then look how dark all those rocks are. What I do in these scenarios is basically expose for the highlights. You can see my histogram just starting to clip the highlight detail. And then I pull up the shadow details here in the computer. So looking on the back of the camera, it's not going to look that impressive, but you just got to be, once you know your camera's capabilities and its limitations, it allows you to basically in the field collect the data and then bring that data home and now we create the exposure. So looking at the file now, the first thing for me approaching this would be to bring up that dynamic range or balance out the dynamic range. The first thing I would do now is bring up the entire exposure. So you can see everything is getting brought up. Then I would recover the highlights so we're not losing too much of those tones up there. And then I'll bump up some of the shadow details a little bit. So now you can see all the details a bit more similar to how the human eye saw it. Obviously being a raw file, the vibrance and saturation is going to need a little bit of boosting up. The main thing for me now with this image is the color grading. There's so many beautiful colors in there, real subtle colors in that canyon. It's all about the greens, the cool tones, the blues and the greens. By nature, the white balance on the camera here, I just leave it on auto, but it's given the image a little bit of a warmer feel. I want to lean into that more cooler vibe to really just accentuate the forest really and the fact that we're in a canyon with this freezing water. So I want to get away from the warms lean into the cooler tones and the way I do that is primarily jumping in the color grading, working on the midtones and shadows, even potentially the highlights. So jumping on the midtones, a lot of this image is a midtone all in that center area and then obviously we have the shadows either side. So with the mids, I'm going to pick a, a bluey green and there's a bit of trial and error when you're doing this, but let's just start to apply some of that and that is giving a nice, a nice look and just tweak that slightly. Now the shadows, let's really cool those down. Give those shadows a bit of a bluer feel. Something like that, approximately. Now, if I turn that on and off, you'll see the difference. Okay, it's subtle, but it's effective. The other one is when you have these shadows, if you raise them up, then they're gonna look quite flat because the entire thing is being lifted. And now we've lost that sense of depth. I want the shadow details to be revealed, but then if you look within the shadows, there's there's other tones in there. There's mid-tones, there's highlights. I just want to work on those and give these rocks that are framing up the waterfall a sense of depth, a bit of three-dimensionality. The way I would do that is using the adjustment brush, which is the main tool I like to use, and then I'd bring up highlights and primarily whites, and even a little bit of texture in this scenario because it's closer to the viewer and start to just run that through these dark areas. And you can see now that's just lifting in the right spot some details. So we don't just have one big flat dark zone. It's now got a little bit of depth to it. Now that depth, it's got a, as we travel through the scene, we wanna make sure that whatever's closest to the viewer has a, a stronger sense of texture and detail. Then as we get back into the waterfall, we want it to be more of that atmospheric look. It's happening already because of all the mist off the waterfall, but it's just something that I really like to accentuate. So now that we've done a little bit of detail work in these foreground rocks here, I might even just do a little bit of contrast there too. So there you go. So really bringing out that tonal range. In the background now where the waterfall is, I'll do the opposite. I'll actually decrease the tonal range. And a quick way you can do that is with the dehaze going into the minus, a rehaze. By rehazing, it's just gonna give the illusion of it looking further away, and that's exactly what I want. It's just gonna showcase the depth. Now that highlight up there is probably still a little bit bright for my liking, so now for fresh brush, I'll just bring that down a little bit. But I want it to still be bright. It won't look natural if it's too dark like what I've done there now. So just getting that right balance, like so. So if I was gonna summarize it, bringing up that dynamic range, balancing out the tones so we can see the shadows, we can see the highlights, creating a sense of depth by accentuating the, the texture and the tonal range in the dark rocks, which are closest to the viewer and framing up the waterfall. Then in the background, creating that atmospheric sense of depth by hazing it out. And then of course the color grading, leaning into 
that cooler type color balance, that color grade, which to me is just the essence of the place. It's cold and it looks better by bringing out those greens instead of it being a little bit warmer. The other thing even just globally, just reducing the temperature, the water just looks nicer when it's cooler. And I think it really just kind of sums up how I felt at that place on that given day, standing there in the rain. All right, everyone, thank you so much for checking out this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I certainly did. To me, it doesn't get much better really, getting out into nature, sharing that with my son, and then walking away from an image for the portfolio. It's just kind of the pinnacle of what it's all about really. So if you have any questions, as always, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.